You're welcome back. It's still breakfast and we're talking a lot of things, but right now we want to talk nutrition. And uh, the experts say that uh, the intake of salt and sugar should be regulated because there's an amount that you take and it will be too much. Uh, but I don't know much to say about that. Uh, we've been told all the time that um, is either you take the drugs that you are given by the chemist or you take a food that is good enough for your body and avoid the other kind of drugs. So there are two types of drugs. It's your choice uh, to make which one you want to take. We have a nutritionist here in the house who will be telling us much about what we need to know, especially about the standard intake, uh, if I may use that word, of salt and sugar. And I, it's my pleasure to introduce Mrs. Oluwa Kemi Olarinwaju, a registered dietitian. Welcome to the pro program. Thank you so much. Okay, um, let's just kick off with uh, what you would define as the good nutrition. What constitutes what you eat and can call, uh, can say that you've had good nutrition. Okay, having good nutrition is having a balanced diet meaning that you have all food groups in your plates when you want to eat. All? All food groups, meaning you have carbohydrates, you have protein, fats, vitamins, minerals, and most importantly, water. Does it always have to be all of them in every meal? Um, yes, to be considered a balanced diet. So when I'm taking my tea now, I need meat. <laughs> <laughs> not exactly. Okay. Tea is supposed to be like um, a side. It's a beverage. Okay. So it's not considered a meal. Mm. But when you're considering having a meal, like a standard meal, then it must be a balanced diet. Okay. Oh, well, I was just wondering. <laughs> and uh, there are some people who say, tea is good enough for me. I take it in the morning and that's good enough. Yeah, it's good to help you start your day. But that's not considered a meal. So the day will start... In an imbalanced way. <laughs> <laughs> Not even green tea. More or less. Uh, those are startup days, like your tea time. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. Talk about tea time. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, I, 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 just to digress, I have um, a senior man, you know, who doesn't take his tea with the milk. You know, most times when he has an area of green tea in his house, you go in the morning, he will sit down, have breakfast, a lot of green tea and stuff. But he doesn't put milk. And I asked him, he said it's not... It, it reduces the potency of the green tea. It's well, that's it's true. Good. For green teas or some type of tea, you don't require milk sometimes okay. in them okay. because they, are, they contain antioxidants and they are nutritious the way they are. So adding milk would invariably reduce the potency. Okay. So okay. it's best to take them okay. without okay. milk. But here are Nigerians, you know, buying malt and then adding milk and then telling you that it gives them blood. Especially when you want to go donate blood. <laughs> <laughs> I, suspect, I suspect you are good. <laughs> I suspect you. Suspect you. <laughs> I've seen it a lot. Yeah. Um, well, that's just meant to compensate people when they donate their blood. It's not necessarily that when you take malt and milk, it will increase your blood levels. The one oh. you have given out, no. But oh. it's just a compensation that, okay, you have given something, we need to give you something back. In return. But are there foods that are blood builders? Yes, there are. Like? Um, you have beetroots, you have some vegetables that are rich in iron, mm -hmm. which are good for blood building. Okay. Interesting. Um, so, so let's talk about you. Um, okay. How did you, you know, become so interested in nutrition? Okay. Um, that's a very personal question. My dad was... Um, diabetic, hypertensive, and um, he had kidney disease and I had to help him with his nutrition to help because at some point, when you come down with some types of diseases, you need more than medication to help you. So you need the right food along with the medication. So I, that was why I had the flair of going into nutrition. Mm. You know, we have something in common because um, I also had the opportunity to take care of my dad. I got the opportunity okay. in his health and everything and uh, I can relate. I can relate. It's um, very important. And wow. So that's the story right there. And so far, you've enjoyed your, you know, your, your foray into the world of nutrition? Yes, so far so good. I've had five years' experience Fantastic. in nutrition. Fantastic. Okay, um, let's just look at the basic things. Uh, there, let me, I know some people who buy a bag of salt, a bag, and keep in their house and they challenge themselves, let them see how much of this salt they can, they can eat before they die. Weird, <laughs> but I've seen that. that that's, 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 that's really weird. Like, weird, yes, it, that's weird. And I've also seen people who take like 
you know, in a day, they could take up to six bottles of the big cola, big soda drink, you know, in a day, six or even more. And I'm wondering, experts warn us that these things are too much. How much is too much, really, for salt and sugar intake? Okay, for salt and sugar, there are invariably things that we get in our diet. Every food, or most food that you eat, it contains a part of salt because they are enhancers. They make the food taste good. They give us a good mood as well. Because when you eat food that contains salt and sugar, you feel better, you feel good. That's why you find out that when people are low on energy, the first thing they want to go is get a bottle of soda to help them boost their sugar. But in the real sense, we need about just 3.5 grams of salt in a day. That's about one tablespoon of salt in a day, throughout the day, regardless okay. of what you are eating. But you find out that people take as much as seven to 10 grams, which is about two, three teaspoons. How, how do they take this? You know? Yeah, because they're not measuring. Most people eat out. So we find out that when you eat out and um, you get junk food, snacks, some snacks are salty. So all those things are added. Mm. That's, uh, interesting. that's interesting. Um, yes. so, so, so we need just a tablespoon? Just one tablespoon of salt. Okay, th th I think that should be enough, you know. For yeah, but it's not measured. We'll now go and measure it. Even if when you're cooking, you have a pot. Mm. So it's not as if you're measuring, oh, this is the amount I want to have for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Mm -hmm. But when cooking, is advised to reduce your salt addition. Because you find out that even the spices, they contain salt or sodium in them, which is, not, which is supposed to be regulated. I see. I see. Um, so, so, so when it comes to um, uh, uh, salt and blood pressure, tell us about that. Oh, well. Because you know, people who have maybe blood pressure issues struggle to, you know, to, to manage it because they can't eat foods without salt. Some will say, okay, they use the, the seasoning, the normal ones that we know, mm -hmm. uh, the seasoning to replace the salt, and that's okay. Okay, for people that are hypertensive, we place them on low salt diet. But people always confuse it and say it's no salt. We are not supposed to have no salt diet. It's supposed to be low salt diet. Why, why, no, why, why not no uh, salt Because diet? salt has its own functions in the body. It helps to regulate the fluid in our body. The, even the blood flow in our body is regulated by the salt. So you find out that when the salt intake is too high, it would affect the blood flow and mm. invariably cause hypertension. So you find out that even the condiments, the spices you're talking about, most of them contain salt as well. So we have to put into consideration that, okay, all these ingredients I'm putting into this meal contain salt. So it has to be regulated. It's always good to read labels. Even when you're buying things, canned foods are mostly preserved with salt or sodium. See. Yeah, so most times we advise that when you buy canned food, it's best to rinse them to oh. reduce the salt, the salt in them. So, so but if, if you compensate for salt now, if you are hypertensive um, with the, all this star and all those little you know, cubes, um, mm -hmm. I won't call the names. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the seasoning. The seasoning. <laughs> I was the, yeah, the seasoning. The seasoning cubes contain salt. So it st can still have an effect on your yes, blood pressure? Yes, it would have, yes. Oh, wow. So it's best, like people say, oh, I don't want to use salt. They said I should stay off salt, but they use the cubes. Normal, but even the normal cubes, quantity. But even the cubes, no, people had, now, in our homes, we don't measure the salt we're putting. It's just discretion. You it find is. out people just say, oh, this salt is enough. And they will taste. They will taste. <laughs> but that is, when you taste the salt, that's bad. Yeah. You shouldn't taste the salt in the food. Okay. That means you're tasting the saltiness in the food. That's absolutely not Okay, just, just, right. just there's a local belief okay. that if you have... Um, Stomach upset, for instance. You just mix salt, high concentration on water, and drink, and it goes off. How dangerous is that? Ah, uh, well, it's... <laughs> experts say that it's, it's not... Um, that's not always the solution. But that's mostly the first thing that people think. Mm -hmm. But taking um, a proper medication or knowing the root cause of that stomach upset, it can be because you took something that is upsetting your tummy or you took something that is not well cooked. So you need to know why 
you have that upset before you go around and take salt. Taking salt is just going to increase your, um, the cells. We used to have ORT when we were growing up. Yeah, that's good. You have con um, that constitutes sugar and, and, and salt. That's supposed to increase the electrolyte because when you find out people have diarrhea and they go to the restroom as often as possible, they lose some electrolytes. So we ask them to take an ORS, which is good. I remember back in the day, the government used to spend a lot of time, you know, making in advance of ORT. ORT you know, yes. so they add two tablespoons of sugar, and we used to do that if you have some cups. And um, um, let's go back to you as a, as a nutritionist. Um, uh, what have you found to be, you know, the biggest challenge in trying to help people with their nutrition and diet? Uh, people are not, um, they are not conscious and they are not um, intentional. Until we get to that point whereby people are intentional about their health, then it helps us too. Because we try to promote preventive health care for people. But you find out that is when they have, when they come down with a certain disease, they start looking for us. Mm. And at that point, the damage is done. We can only try to correct. But it's not going to be totally corrected. We can only try. Okay. So you, you need to have a dietitian or nutritionist every day in your life. Yeah, you can make one your friend to oh live healthy. Okay, I think... Um, We're lucky. Yeah, yeah. We're lucky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so is there a difference between a dietitian and a nutritionist? What? Is there a difference between a dietitian and a nutritionist? Okay, now, all nutritionists are dietitians, okay. but not all dietitians are nutritionists. Okay. Because okay. Um, a dietitian is regulated by law, mm -hmm. and you have to become registered and certified okay. to be a dietitian. Okay. But okay. people can just study a course and say they are nutritionists. But for a dietitian, you need to have clinical experience okay. to become a dietitian. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah. how the lifestyle of a, a regular Nigerian, what we eat in Nigeria, is it, could you describe it as being healthy or harmful when it comes to sugar and salt being in a, a part of our diet? Okay. Most Nigerians live on junk food and they don't even eat a balanced diet. Have you had breakfast this morning? Why are you attacking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, please answer the question. This is, this is breakfast. Answer the question. Answer the question. Yes, I've, I've, had I've had breakfast. Okay, okay, okay. so we say breakfast is the most important meal of the day mm. because that keeps you going. You yeah. start your day um, with good nutrients and good source of energy. So that keeps you throughout the day. But you find out that most Nigerians don't have breakfast. They try to push it to lunch, and they tend to eat heavy. So that would affect what they are going to have for dinner as well. And please, spare us. <laughs> we are doing intermittent fasting. We are doing intermittent fasting. Um, so uh, intermittent fasting is not it's, it's sustainable. It's a rave right now. It's not sustainable. Really? No, it's not. So that would lead to weight gain. 16-8. Or we'll do 18.4. <laughs> Intermittent fasting is generally not sustainable. Really? No, it's not. We need to talk some more. But they say some, <laughs> She's busting some my of, bubble. <laughs> some form of fasting is healthy. That's what yeah, they say. Yeah, it's healthy, yeah. but you don't have to subject your body to fasting for a long oh. period of time. Intermittent oh. fasting should be for a short period. It's mm. not a long-term solution mm. to All living right. healthy. We have to go. We have to go. Um, if you were to give people out there... Uh, some advice, just okay. one shot. You have one chance to tell people the most important nutritional uh, nutrition tip or advice that they need for their lives. What would it be? Okay, I'll tell them to cut down on salt and sugar intake. I'll tell them to eat a balanced diet and also to live healthy. Thank You're you. Right. You're right. Interesting. It's been fun having you. Thank you. Uh, Oluwa Kemi Olari Waju is a registered dietitian and nutritionist. And she's been our guest on this segment of The Breakfast. We'll take a break. When we come back, we have more ahead. Please stay with us. <laughs>